This is the Brave New Coin Crypto Conversation, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. I'm your host and welcome to the Crypto Conversation, a Brave New Coin podcast where we talk to the people building the future in the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency space. Hey team, we have a new sponsor here at the Crypto Conversation, BitGet, one of the world's leading copy trading cryptocurrency exchanges. Yes, indeed. What happens if you've got the funds to invest, but you don't have the time to keep track of the market? You still want to make smart money moves. What do you do? Well, copy trading is a popular choice for beginner traders. You can shorten your learning curve by uncovering tips and strategies from more experienced traders. BitGet's copy trading platform has over 80,000 elite traders to choose from and 380,000 followers just like yourself who are already using the BitGet copy trading platform as a potential passive income stream. All it takes is one click. You can subscribe to an elite, profitable strategist, set your limits, automate your orders, and monitor their trades. I've got some links in the show notes below. One link will take you through to the BitGet sign up page, give you a VIP discount. So learn all about it for yourself, thanks to BitGet. And now it is on with the show. Hey folks, Andy here, and yes, firstly, uh, thanks to BitGet for sponsoring the show. As I mentioned, that VIP link to sign up to BitGet is in the show notes, and if you use that link, uh, you can sign up and trade to get a $50 bonus. Yes, indeed, Uh, $50 bonus in USDT. So, what are you waiting for? Sign up uh, to BitGet and redeem your $50 in USDT just by following the link in the show notes. My guest today is Dan Edelbeck. Dan is the Director of Ecosystem at Phi Labs, which is a core contributor to Archway, the value capture chain, which we will learn all about today. Welcome to the show, Dan. Hey, Andy, thanks so much for having me. A uh, big fan of uh, Brave New Coin and all the, all the content that uh, you guys are putting out. Awesome. Uh, very nice of you to say. Uh, look, let's do what we do at the beginning of the show, Dan. Uh, I'd love it if you could please introduce yourself uh, to the listeners. Just love to hear a, a little bit about your uh, professional journey and, and what you've been doing in the lead up uh, to taking on the role of Director of Ecosystem at Fire Labs and uh, you're working across Archway. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's been uh, quite the winding journey, right, as, as it is in crypto. Um, yes. It's been, yeah, interesting. So, I kind of fell down the uh, the proverbial uh, blockchain crypto rabbit hole in um, late 2016, early 2017, and started working in the space um, by the middle of 2017. And so I've had a wide variety of different roles in different ecosystems. Uh, originally kind of in the ETH, the broader Ethereum ecosystem, I um, kicked off the community for SALT Lending, which was uh, the original like lending protocol uh, before... Oh, yeah. Um, Ave, actually the competitor to Salt Lending, one was called um, ETH Lend, which was like considered kind of like a, a lower tier competitor to the real player that was Salt Lending. Um, it's kind of crazy how things change, but ETH Lend ended up becoming Ave. Um, so yeah, I was at Salt, I kind of kicked off the community and got things going at Salt Lending. Um, and then have also just had a wide variety of different roles throughout the years. I uh, led marketing at um, Block Party which was the first uh, protocol to do ticketing uh, on chain for NFTs. So they put on a music festival in Miami uh, and ticketed the whole event via NFTs. I think that was 2019. Um, And I also led my own PR and marketing agency in crypto called Dito Connects. Uh, We took on uh, clients like us, like uh, Metal Pay and uh, Mind AI and several others and helped them with uh, community and messaging and uh, go to market uh, and also um, connecting them to other um, players in the space and getting them uh, exposed to exchanges and market makers. Um, but the last several years, I've been in Cosmos. So I founded uh, Exidio, which was the software development company building the products and uh, core infrastructure for the Sentinel blockchain. Uh, and Sentinel was a peer-to-peer marketplace for bandwidth and for VPN. So it's a decentralized VPN network. Um, and we built out a lot of the consumer products for that and also uh, maintain the core infrastructure for the chain. And then prior to Archway, I was at Say. Uh, Say Labs is building the Say blockchain, also built in the Cosmos, um, a layer one built for trading and um, uh, exchanges. And I was uh, building out ecosystem there. 
Um, and then uh, a couple months ago, not even two months ago, a month and a half ago, I switched to Archway, which is a layer one, also built with the Cosmos tech stack, but exclusively built for developers uh, and for sustainable income and um, more uh, dependable incentives built on uh, smart contract premiums and other incentives baked into the chain. Yes, indeed. And so we'll learn uh, a little bit, a little bit more about that, how that value capture works uh, during the course of today's show. Let's start then uh, with Phi Labs. That's how you say it, isn't it? Phi Labs. Yeah, exactly. So uh, tell us just because uh, I, I had a look at the, the Phi Labs website, and you know I always like it when there's a, a little bit of a um, I don't know a, a narrative or, or a backstory or a bit of a, a bit of meaning. So uh, Phi, of course, is uh, the number known as uh, as the golden ratio, right? Exactly. Yeah. So thinking about um, more sustainability and thinking about things more holistically. Yeah, and it's um, yeah, it's one of those uh, numbers or formulas, if you like. You see it in art, you see it in nature, architecture, and well, now I suppose uh, Web three and and blockchain. So, so Phi Labs, just just tell us a little bit about how this works, then Dan. So, essentially, Phi Labs uh, is uh, the core contributor, if you like, um, to uh, Archway, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So, you know, it's a it's a broad and um, Kind of growing ecosystem, but um, as the Archway blockchain develops and the protocol grows, um, Phi Labs has been contributing to the success and ensuring that um, it has the the right tech and security. Um, but there's other contributors, but yeah, Phi Labs is a core contributor to uh, the growth of the Archway protocol. And just as some context, I suppose, then as to why you guys have decided to build on Cosmos, because I, I saw a I, I'm not sure where I saw it. it might have been a, a blog post by Griffin Anderson, who's the founder of Phi Labs, and I saw that he was talking about his how he's 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 a dev. He's always been a developer, and he loves being a developer. But the way he explained it is, you know, working as a developer in Web two, of course you know you don't have control over the platforms you're just a you're just a humble dev you're kind of at the mercy of uh, where the big web2 companies go so you don't have any control and then he spoke about you know uh, discovering blockchain and ethereum and being incredibly excited by this new world but then eventually becoming a little bit burnt out by the ethereum ecosystem and he talked about how he could see some of the same issues in, in Web2, if you like, were also, to his surprise, present uh, in Ethereum. It was kind of alluding to, I don't know, uh, insider deals and just behind the scenes uh, machinations, the kind of stuff that does tend to happen when you have humans involved. Um, but if that's the context, uh, perhaps, yeah, tell us why um, Griffin and people such as yourself have decided uh, to build Archway um, on Cosmos. Yeah, no, you got it exactly right, Andy. So Griffin was kind of deep in Ethereum. He was um, at uh, Consensus, which was uh, and still is kind of um, a leading development shop and um, building out a lot of the core um, tooling for Ethereum. And he was there early on and he saw the Ethereum ecosystem rise and, and start to take off. Um, I don't know if you're uh, familiar, Andy, with the, the FAT protocol thesis. Oh, yes, yes, I am. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's kind of what Griffin saw play out in real time was as a developer and, and, and as seeing people build really cool products on Ethereum, he saw that actually a lot of those developers weren't um, the ones that were reaping a lot of the benefits from the products they were making. And a lot of the value was getting captured at, at the layer one and people that were holding the ETH token and um, were the ones that were gaining like a lot of value, even though some of these applications were starting to take off and uh, the devs weren't participating in the upside. And I think that frustrated him exactly to your point, the similar to kind of web two um, architectures and uh, gatekeepers. Like if you're building an app and um, Google doesn't decide to push push it on the, the the Play Store or Apple doesn't put it on the App Store, you're you're at the mercy of their operations or they can take 30% profit right off the top. Um, and it's just, it becomes a hostile environment where um, small players take, you know, significant uh, cuts of the pie. And I think he was, um, a little uh, frustrated seeing that kind of playing out again in the Ethereum ecosystem. 
And so, yeah, the idea is that Archway is was his was initial his initial idea is to build a blockchain, flipping the flat protocol thesis on its head, and where developers that are creating value, bringing users, bringing activity on chain, are also the ones that are being able to capture a lot of that value that they're creating. Yeah, I like it. So the idea is Archway is an incentivized layer one blockchain uh, that, as Dan has articulated, uh, the idea is to allow developers, pretty simple, to capture the value uh, that their dApps create. And by doing that, hopefully the idea is, of course, you can create uh, virtuous loops or, you know, sustainable economic models uh, where everyone can benefit. And uh, I suppose another way of talking about this is uh, you describe it as a value capture engine, uh, Dan. Yeah, exactly. So what, what, how does the Archway blockchain enable developers to be able to benefit and, and get mm. that upside? It's not just another typical layer one blockchain that's a carbon copy of every other chain. It's been a uh, specific... Uh, specifically designed and engineered with modules built into the chain for that specific purpose. So um, we call it the value capture engine, but those are the actual modules built into the Archway protocol um, at the consensus layer for developers to be able to customize their smart contracts and add smart contract premiums uh, to their contracts so that they're able to generate revenue every time that the smart contract is interacted with. And not only are they able to benefit from that, but um, the gas that's paid on the network for uh, transactions, a portion of that goes back to the developer's smart contracts uh, and they can customize the addresses. And then a portion of the inflation yield also goes back to the developers and uh, their smart contract uh, receiving addresses. So it's uh, a chain designed with unique mechanisms for developers to be able to um, participate in the upside. Yeah, that's right. So just going over that again, um, yeah, for, for devs, for developers, uh, yeah, you can get a, a premium on your smart contract or like a, a tiny little fee every time someone uh, uses your contract or DAP. Uh, inflationary yield, so you can receive a share of the network's inflation um, via, I presume, uh, the Arch token, and you can earn tokens every time someone uses your contract through the gas fee uh, rebates. So we'll talk about this, the, the native token then, Arch, uh, Dan. Yeah, no, so that's that's exactly right. The native token is used um, for the um, securing of the blockchain and for governance. So people that are holding the chain can um, participate in on-chain governance and the direction of the protocol. Uh, and they're also using it to secure the blockchain via staking the token uh, and incentivizing the validators to uh, continue to secure and validate the chain. Um, and then also the, the token is also used to incentivize the developers to build on the, on the ecosystem because um, a percentage of the inflation rewards and a percentage of the gas burned on the network is going back to those smart contract developers. So the idea is that it doesn't have extreme high inflation. Um, the token versus where a lot of other layer one blockchains um, have a really high in inflationary um, design. And with this like lower inflation, it's, it's more um, kind of realistic and sustainable. And the idea is that as you develop, Andy, an application that takes off, the just traditional yield from your smart contract premiums and for, from the activity happening on chain is sustainable incentives. And um, the chain itself doesn't have to have uh, outrageous kind of inflationary mechanisms to um, incentivize activity on chain. Yep, got it. Um, tell us then, um, are there any, um, what are, what are some of the apps, uh, in the emerging Archway ecosystem at the moment that are starting to gain traction and, and is Archway, is it, does it lean towards any part of, um, the blockchain ecosystem or presumably there are, there are different applications representing all, all, uh, different kinds of blockchain use cases? Yeah, I know that's a good question, Andy. And the answer is is uh, yes and yes. This is uh, definitely a, a blockchain where any application can um, build and find a home on. But one thing that um, we're seeing a lot of traction kind of coming from developer side is more on the uh, infrastructure and tooling um, aspects of the chain. Um, so kind of core, core uh, infrastructure like oracles and um, RPC nodes and uh, wallets and um, 
and host uh, web hosting. A lot of these applications are coming to Archway because of the unique Archway model and where there's a lot of activity that's happening on chain with a lot of these infrastructure players, the uh, more it makes sense to house them and, and have them settle on the Archway blockchain. So we're seeing a lot of that activity, uh, oracles, and then um, things in DeFi like stable coins are really interesting. Uh, and we're seeing uh, a few different stable coins that are interested in um, you know, deploying and having their, their token on Archway. Um, but then we do have applications kind of from different varieties of um, blockchain use cases, including uh, NFTs and NFT marketplaces and um, digital identity and um, yield generating applications and um, DEXs and automated market makers and um, uh, you know a wide variety of different applications are, are kind of coming and building on Archway. And I'd have to look at the most recent number, but uh, I think we're just about 100 applications that have committed or are, are building on Archway. I love it. And uh, look, Dan, we introduced you at the at the top of the show as as the director of ecosystem, um, which is well, it's a great title. So I suppose uh, I, I should have asked you at the beginning, but uh, yeah, what does that actually entail? What what do you do as director of ecosystem? What does it mean? Yeah, no, it's a it's a broad mandate. So it's it's some directors of ecosystems can change kind of depending on the protocol or what that looks like. But for me, it's everything on the growth side. So when I kind of think of a development company that's supporting blockchain infrastructure, I think of it in kind of three chunks, like uh, developers and engineering side, um, the growth side, and then operations, more back of the house, supporting uh, legal and um, finance and uh, structuring. Um, but everything on the growth side is what I'm helping to lead out at Phi Labs. So, um, Ecosystem development, whether that's applications building on Archway or uh, infrastructure providers or wallets or validators, um, so everything in that ecosystem, plus um, the go-to-market and marketing side uh, and working with um, a great PR agency and working with uh, our um, marketing strategist and our um, head of uh, socials and our um, uh, marketing ecosystem uh, developer and then um, everything on the community side. So building out our community, thinking about community initiatives, how to make um, the ecosystem enticing for people that are uh, looking to learn more about L1s and how to provide activities for them to participate on chain. So kind of a, a little broad mandate. A little bit of everything indeed. Um, you know, it's an interesting time, Dan, obviously uh, won't have escaped your notice uh, that the the market is down at the moment. We have been in a, a bear market for some time. And of course, you know, famously in, in crypto bear markets, you do see uh, all sorts of metrics uh, tend to drop off for everything from, you know, website visits to, to podcast listeners uh, to uh, new user signups. And of course, it just means uh, the interest in all sorts of uh, blockchain applications, it can be harder to gain traction, to gain mm -hmm. uh, new users, to um, attract new developer interest, all those things. And those are all, all the things that you are kind of in charge of encouraging. Mm -hmm. So uh, interested in your thoughts as I, I suppose, you know, we're in that kind of current market cycle, are we? And, and how challenging is it to uh, attract those new developers and, and new user acquisitions uh, when it isn't a raging bull market? <laughs> You're not wrong about any of that, Andy. And I've, I've kind of seen this, this cycle play out a few times now. So I definitely agree. Um, but I actually think that there's some blessing in operating in this kind of period right now. Because, you know, like I said, there's about 100 teams that are building applications. They're building core tooling on the Archway blockchain. Those are teams that I'm, we're going to be working with, you know, for multiple, multiple years. Um, so that's one kind of like hidden blessing is, yeah, it, it's challenging. And, um, you know, the size of the like broader community might be smaller and the general interest is definitely waned. And the mainstream media is also painting a, a pretty um, negative or hostile picture. Um, and so those are all kind of natural headwinds that you, you face as a, as a marketer and as a, um, uh, a growth, um, you know, someone building in the, in the growth space in, in crypto, especially during these times. But you're also working with more diehard contributors and you are finding people that are going to be around um, not just for the next bull market, but are going to be around uh, longer term. 
So um, I take some solace in that. And I think that it's good that we're building a strong and kind of like sturdy ecosystem right now. And uh, everything is going to scale and we're already working long hours as it is. I know it's going to be intense during uh, the bull market. Um, so I think the main thing right now is um, the developers and builders that are building really good products and that actually have good user experience and they're things that consumers actually want um, right now are going to be the ones that have significant adoption are going to be the ones that people are paying attention to. And, you know, whenever the tides turn, whether it's, you know, six months or 18 months or, or whatever it may be. Um, but I think right now, nothing really changes from a builder's perspective and, and from all the people that I'm working with at Phi Labs, uh, surrounded by people that are long-term kind of uh, mindset and are, are building products because they really care about them. Uh, and um, I'm just helping them to actually get users to come to their products. And yeah, we're excited about kind of, uh, you know, what we're building. And I know that, um, you know, we're going to continue to get the message out and have consumers try to test out these products. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, just uh, again, make the case for for developers who who might be listening. Well, and, and indeed uh, users as to why they should uh, explore uh, the Archway ecosystem. Dan. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So I think it's the uh, the case is pretty clear. Um, if you're an app developer and you're interested in the broader Cosmos ecosystem, and so that's every blockchain that's connected to all the other. Cosmos layer one blockchains via IBC, the inner blockchain communications protocol, then it makes sense to come and explore that user base and that liquidity and that growing ecosystem. And uh, Archway is a really uh, kind of obvious and, and seem easy place to do so, uh, to first deploy your applications uh, for, for two reasons. One, because it's extremely easy to deploy an application on Archway. Uh, we're a Cosmos wasm based uh, smart contract um, layer one blockchain. And we have really good support uh, for developers that are building Cosmosm smart contracts. Um, the the, our, the PhiLabs engineering team is 20 strong. And a lot of these uh, are coming initially from Tendermint, which was the core protocol to build out Tendermint consensus and um, the Cosmos SDK, the software developer kit, and really know exactly how to get their hands dirty with Cosmos and have been building it on it for you know, five years. Uh, and so a lot of the top developers in the broader Cosmos ecosystem are uh, on, on the team here at Archway. And then also, as you think about the applications you're building, you want to think about what application and blockchain you're building on. And is it going to be long-term sustainable? And Archway with um, the uh, value capture engines built into the chain and with sustainable and recurring incentives for developers to actually generate revenue for the applications they're bringing, the applications and users they're bringing on chain um, is going to recur, generate a recurring revenue. And we're actually seeing applications that are coming to Archway that are deciding to not launch their own token and just um, launch based on um, the fees and incentives they'll be creating by having their applications um, launch and deploy on Archway. But it's also possible for an application, if they want to launch their own native token, they can do so and, and still deploy on Archway. But um, the, the seamless experience of deploying and getting an application to market uh, and the ability to generate recurring rewards, I think makes for a, a really great base to get access to the broader cosmos. Yes, indeed. And just, I guess, if we zoom out a bit, Dan, we did touch on it a little bit earlier, but um, can you, well, how would you characterize, uh, I suppose, like the the wider culture uh, within the Cosmos uh, ecosystem versus, you know, we don't necessarily need to play versus games, but, you know, <laughs> compare and mm -hmm. contrast to something, you know, maybe Ethereum or, or something like that. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I would say that... Um... It is definitely a unique world. Uh, Cosmos is incredibly decentralized, maybe maybe to a fault. There isn't, like when if you're going to Solana, you can kind of go to Anatoly or you, you can go to the Solana Foundation and you kind of have like, like a head of the beast that you can interact with and they can guide you down the path of exactly how to um, create applications and where the like um, types of use cases that have the most need in the Solana ecosystem. Yeah. At, um, in the Cosmos, it's very decentralized because there is no like one layer one there's it's a network of um a magnitude of layer ones it's an internet of blockchains and so there's different um layer one blockchains there's different foundations there's different uh developer companies 
Uh, and so it's a very distributed and decentralized ecosystem. And with that, it comes, uh, I think, a unique community. So it's it's very much developer focused and it's very much kind of geeky and it's, uh, I would say, a little bit less hypey. Um, and there aren't like many tokens in the very like top 10 or anything yet. Um, the Atom token, I think, is maybe in the top 20 or so uh, in coin ranking. And that's been the highest one in the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, and so I think it's like it's built a community around it that are more excited about the potential of a horizontally scaling uh, ecosystem with uh, a network of sovereign layer ones versus um, kind of a VC hyped chain. I would say that um, the cosmos is more nerdy and, and less kind of hyped. Um, but I also think that there's a lot of exciting applications and there's a pretty fervent community. Uh, even in this bear market, you'll if you go into like Cosmos Twitter, which is a subset of the crypto Twitter, you'll see that there's like a ton of activity happening every day. And there's a very kind of diehard fervent uh, following. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think um, th there's, a, there's a real um, optimism in Cosmos, I think, is, is the word I would use. Does, does that resonate? Yeah, yeah. Optimism for sure. But it's also funny because of its distributed na nature. Um, I maybe, you know, maybe there's this drama in every ecosystem. I probably yeah. just being hyper focused in one, you notice it more, but uh, because of its kind of distributed nature, everyone has different ideas and it's a very much democratic and kind of like individualistic process of how things get moved forward um, instead of kind of like coming from the top down. And so that's really interesting to see kind of some of that uh, play out in real time um, on Twitter and, and, and in uh, different chat rooms. Um, but yeah, I think that all comes from like a, a fervent and passionate um, community. Yeah. And just the, uh, it all just boils down to the messiness of humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we can't get away from that. All right. Even though, you know, DAOs and AI, all these different tools, uh, technological innovations that humans are inventing to slowly but surely take the um, the folly of humans out of the equation. But we're not quite there yet, but, but it's happening. Um, all right. Look, as we finish off this part of the podcast, Dan, just just tell people where they can go if they want to uh, dig into uh, the documentation, the technical aspects, all the different resources uh, that you have. Um, what should they do? Where should they go? Yeah, no, absolutely. Appreciate it, Andy. Uh, this has been great chatting with you. So uh, definitely follow Archway on Twitter. It's at Archway HQ. And uh, check out the website, archway.io. And on the Archway website at the bottom, you'll see all the different documentation, uh, the technical paper, the light paper, the economics paper. Uh, there's lots of kind of uh, nitty gritty that you get to dig into. Uh, and then if you were to go to docs.archway.io, um, you'll see all the documentation and developer resources for deploying on chain or for spinning up um, a node or a validator. Um, so yeah, I would say the Archway HQ Twitter account, archway.io and docs.archway.io. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to uh, the Archway website, which, uh, yeah, as Dan has just said, is archway.io. But it, it's, a, it's actually a, a, a really good uh, website, and there is certainly a wealth of resources, everything uh, you could possibly uh, want in terms of, yeah, everything, doc documentation, uh, the grants program, rewards calculator, it shows how it all works if you're a dev block explorers, uh, the bridging documentation, validator resources, literally everything you could need to get involved and start building is there on the website. Cool to see. I reckon we go to a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll have a bit of fun. We'll run Dan through the very famous crypto conversation hot take round back in one okay. moment. Look, we'd all like to say we're pro traders, but the reality is we're probably not. But with BitGet, you don't have to be. Why? Because BitGet is the world's largest copy trading exchange. Instead of you muddling through it on your own, feel confident. BitGet allows you to automatically copy trade from over 80,000 elite traders with 24-7 support on our secure copy trading platform. Start following expert traders on BitGet.com. Check for details in the show notes and join BitGet today. All right, we are back, and I'm with Dan Edelbeck. Dan, of course, is the director of ecosystem at Phi Labs. Yeah, building out the Archway network. 
Dan, I'd like to finish each podcast uh, with a quick round of rapid fire crypto conversation hot takes. Are you up for it? Now let's get it. All right, let's get it. Dan, I'm just going to run some questions at you. No right or wrong way to do this. Just give me your kind of honest answers, hot take style, if you like. Question one for you is, uh, Dan, where would you say that you sit on the Bitcoin maximalist uh, to multi-chain opportunist spectrum? <laughs> I definitely fall uh, pretty far to the right on the multi-chain opportunist spectrum. That doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't thrive and be an asset that... Um, provides a lot of value for humanity, but I think that there's a lot of innovation happening in this space and um, I encourage all of it and humans will figure out the things that are the most useful. Yep, makes sense to me. All right, well, Dan, what would you say is your firmest conviction crypto opinion? My firmest conviction is that, this might be a little bit of a hot take, but but uh, the trope Bitcoin solves this is obviously not not true, and, and blockchain is not going to be some panacea that solves every problem for humanity. Yeah. Um, my career prior to being in the crypto space was in the the social impact and nonprofit space, and uh, saw some really powerful things with helping people. And sometimes the only way you can really make a difference with an individual is by working with them one on one at a human level. Um, and so we can have AI tools, and we can have blockchains that provide better transparency and better automation, and can improve um, transparency, but they're not going to remove a lot of the human element. Um, so I think that blockchains are really powerful and are going to serve a lot of good. Um, but ultimately, we still need to treat each other with respect and dignity and smile at a neighbor. I like it. I like it. Nicely said, Dan. All right. Well, uh, you know, Bill Gates famously said that we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. Anyone who is a dev in crypto will be all too familiar with that concept. Um, but with that in mind, Dan, you know, speculate away. What does, you know, blockchain, Archway, Web3, anything you like, what does it start to look like in 10 years time? Yeah, I mean, what it should look like is that you shouldn't see it. Yep. The, the goal is that a lot of this application, a lot of this infrastructure, and a lot of this technology needs to be abstracted away. Even right now, Andy, going to use, you know, something in EVM and clicking on your little MetaMask, you know, Fox in your browser and clinking and then approving transaction to be able to do something in DeFi, that user flow is still quite horrendous. Let's be honest. So we need to have it work like it works like. You know, we use Venmo in the States to do pay to pay uh, transactions or PayPal or, uh, you know, eBay has been around for 20 years and it's been a really successful application. We need to have the blockchains powering a lot of these applications, providing better transparency, but doing it all in the background and we need to have better UX. So I think that needs to be like a core focus of everyone building in this space. Could not agree more, Dan. All right, the flip side of this is a quote by sci-fi author William Gibson, who famously said that the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. Uh, with that in mind, Dan, can you think of an example of the future being here right now, uh, but most people aren't aware of it? Yeah, I mean, I think what's really powerful, and I would say most is in, like, out of the 8 billion on this planet, 7 plus billion aren't aware of it, but even just the power that DeFi brings is incredible. And while, like I talked about, that user flow on MetaMask is less than ideal, it's still navigatable, even for someone that is uh, very not technically advanced. Um, I am, I've am i worked with people around the globe and been able to pay them directly for their services in stable coins uh, and immediately skipped a very tenuous and uh, difficult uh, swift banking system and that is accessible globally today so it's really powerful and I, I think that like maybe people like us deep in the crypto space might realize that but the ability for someone in Zimbabwe to be able to get a loan um, based on a little bit of the crypto holdings they have and be able to use that to start a business or to be able to um, do an online service and get paid instantaneously even if um, they're shut out from the traditional banking system where they don't have uh, the ability to transact uh, in a native currency and do currency swaps. It, the, the power is already here and it's already really impressive. Uh, and so I think the more and more we adopt as as consumers and as individuals, Web3 applications, um, the more we're going to start getting more and more people on board. So Andy, I encourage uh, out in Australia, as, as you work with other people in Brave Move Point, pay them with a stable coin and um, start using crypto for our day-to-day -day transactions. 
I like it. All right. Um, AI, Dan, have you been playing around uh, with the various uh, large language models? Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. It's pretty pretty crazy. I just had a baby. He turns four months tomorrow, and uh, it's a whole new world that I brought him into. Yeah, and uh, are you familiar with a uh, Worldcoin and the 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 idea behind uh, Worldcoin and what Sam Altman wants to do with that? Yeah, so I'm not. I mean, I haven't dug up on it the most recently, but I remember they had an orb that would like scan your retina, yes. and that provided like I, unique ID tracking for individuals that scanned the orb. I don't know if they pivoted from that, but I know they got a lot of backlash from that when yeah, that think, initially came out a couple of years ago. Yeah, they're still they're still uh, moving ahead with it and moving ahead with it um, even more strongly now due to, I think, you know, the overwhelming success of what they're building at OpenAI. And um, yeah, so I guess, you know, in the, in the context of uh, my hot take questions, I'm just like, you know, yeah, Worldcoin, the idea of scanning the retina of everyone on the planet to be able to effectively you know airdrop them um everyone the same amount of world coin uh, some kind of cryptocurrency um is that a good idea i mean sam alton is a really smart guy and uh he's built some impressive things over the years but i think it's just straight up dumb <laughs> i think it's a horrible idea yeah. I, it, there's you know the, the whole idea of the uncanny valley of when there's some type of robot that is too human-like that it creeps us out. There's there's just, you have to unthink about the human element. Putting some weird orb in front of your face and having it scan your eyeball is creepy. And that's going to be creepy for a while, even as we accept more um, digital technologies and we get more, you know, connected with AI. It's just, and it's also seems incredibly, um, uh, laborious to have a physical device that you have to scan each person's eye and uh, there's a ton of privacy issues and in, in baked into all of this I think it's a horrible idea and I also think that it doesn't put a good face for some of the powers that uh, these decentralized technologies uh, uh, give capacity to because it it just it, it's just a bad look yeah, it's, literally uh, and figuratively. Uh, yeah, you couldn't invent uh, a more uh, dystopian uh, science fiction narrative than kind of scanning everyone's eyeball with this ominous looking orb. Uh, but that is the world we live in, which really brings us uh, to the, the, brings us to our final question, Dan, which uh, is, uh, you know, what is your favorite science fiction uh, book, uh, film or TV show? Oh, hands down, Mr. Robot. Uh, I think that that was so incredibly produced and so spot on. And um, yeah, uh, my wife and I binge watched it for like weeks on end. But if you haven't seen it, you absolutely have to. Um, Evil Corp is coming for us all and uh, we got to we gotta keep an eye out. We're not sure if um, San Altman's um, World Coin is, uh, has uh, connections to Evil Corp. Yeah, oh, look, that is such a good answer, Dan. Uh, I love Mr. Robot, and I was, I was just uh, Googling then as, as you were talking to get the, the name of the coin uh, that they used in uh, Mr. Robot, which, of course, was E-Coin uh, for, yeah. for the, yeah, Evil uh, Corp. But, um, yeah, the parallels there are uh, uncanny, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Too shit. I like it. All right. Hey, um Thank you for coming on the show, Dan. It's been a lot of fun chatting all things Archway, uh, science fiction, AI, uh, dystopia, all that good stuff uh, with you today. Again, just to close us out, again, please tell people where they can find you on Twitter or wherever else you like to hang out. And again, uh, where people can go to dig into the Archway ecosystem. Awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah, so come come uh, rap with me. Hit me up on Twitter. It's Deedle. It's D. And then four E's in a row, D-L-E. And uh, also come follow us at um, the Archway main Twitter account. That's Archway HQ. Um, and yeah, feel free to hit me up in the DMs and, and let's chat if you're interested in uh, the growing ecosystem for blockchains to empower developers. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. All the best and bye for now. See you, Andy. All right. There you go. That was... Dan Edelbeck, Director of Ecosystem at Phi Labs, building out the Archway chain. Mm, fascinating. Yeah, Archway looks good, actually. Uh, do suggest you check out the website. Again, archway.io. 
um, yeah, new chain specifically designed for developers to capture capture the value that you create value capture yeah hope you enjoyed that team i enjoyed that um dan was good uh always enjoy talking ai sci-fi and yeah sam altman's world coin project i'm not sure how i feel about it i do like the idea of you know effectively i don't know if you know too much about it listeners but he's really going to i think the idea is you're going to use a lot of the profit that open ai makes to effectively back this world coin token and then they're going to give the token away but yeah you have to scan your retina which has privacy implications and, and just sounds dystopian mm. yeah anyway i think it's interesting though but mm, i don't know i don't know Anyway, fascinating times. It's fascinating that we live in this world where all these wacky dystopian and utopian sci-fi ideas are suddenly coming to life all around us. What a time to be alive. All right. Thank you for listening, team. Please do make sure you are subscribed uh, to the Crypto Conversation in whatever podcast app you are using so you know when each new weekly episode drops. Give us a nice rating, five-star review. That would be appreciated as well. Anyway, thanks team. Uh, this was the Crypto Conversation for Brave Newcoin.